I will be speaking today about our study, which identified 240 consecutive patients who had presented with a troponin positive acute coronary syndrome, namely an ST segment myocardial infarction or non ST segment myocardial infarction and non obstructive coronary artery disease on coronary angiography who underwent cardiac magnetic resonance imaging. We followed these patients up assessing the primary composite endpoint of myocardial infarction, heart failure, and all-cause mortality. Hi, my name is Alan Lewis. I'm an Associate Professor of Medicine at Mayo Clinic. I will be speaking today about our manuscript entitled Prognostic Value of Cardiac Magnetic Resonance Imaging in Acute Coronary Syndrome Patients with Troponin Elevation and Non-Obstructive Coronary Arteries. This stems from my work at the Prince Charles Hospital in Brisbane, Australia. And this study will appear in the July edition of the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. In this study, after excluding 13 patients with contraindications to or incomplete cardiac magnetic resonance examinations, we included a total of 227 patients who we studied. The mean age of these patients was 56 years of age, and 53% of our study population were female. The median time from initial presentation to coronary angiography was two days, and the time from initial presentation to cardiac magnetic resonance imaging was four days. This included the time from initial presentation to an outside center to coronary angiography at this center or cardiac magnetic resonance imaging at our center. Cardiac magnetic resonance imaging provided a high diagnostic yield in this patient population. We achieved a diagnostic cardiac MRI diagnosis in 79% of patients studied. The remaining 21% of patients were diagnosed as true myocardial infarction with normal coronary arteries or Minoka for short. Myopericarditis was identified in 27%, macroscopic myocardial infarction defined on cardiac magnetic resonance imaging in 24%, Takasubo cardiomyopathy in 16%, and structural cardiomyopathies, including non-ischemic dilated and hypertrophic cardiomyopathy were diagnosed in the remaining 12%. This included 9% who had dilated uh, cardiomyopathies and 3% who had hypertrophic cardiomyopathies. In addition to this, one patient was identified with findings consistent with pulmonary embolism, and this was later confirmed on CT pulmonary angiography. Kathleen Meyer analysis demonstrated the ability of cardiac magnetic resonance diagnoses to predict the risk of myocardial infarction, the risk of heart failure, and the risk of all-cause mortality. It also demonstrated the ability to predict the primary composite endpoint, which included myocardial infarction, congestive cardiac failure, and all-cause mortality amongst this patient population with a working diagnosis of Minoka at a five-year follow-up. Patients with non-structural cardiomyopathies had the lowest event rate, and this was an event rate of 7% for the primary outcome. This group included those patients with myopericarditis and those patients with Takasubo cardiomyopathy. The patients with structural cardiomyopathies, including dilated and hypertrophic cardiomyopathies, had the, five, had the highest five-year event rates at 43%. Multivariable analysis demonstrated that increasing age, hypertension, and a normal cardiac magnetic resonance images were associated with a higher incidence of the composite endpoint, whereas those patients with a higher left ventricular rejection fraction by cardiac magnetic resonance imaging were associated with a lower incidence of the primary composite endpoint of myocardial infarction, heart failure, and all-cause mortality. Patients with true myocardial infarction with normal coronary arteries or MINOCA 
This is namely those patients that had myocardial infarction and normal cardiac magnetic resonance imaging had worse outcomes compared to those patients with macroscopically defined myocardial infarction and cardiac magnetic resonance imaging. Additionally, these patients with true Minoka had significantly lower uses of antiplatelet agents, beta blockers, and statins when compared to those patients with cardiac magnetic resonance confirmed myocardial infarction. This study confirms prior findings that cardiac magnetic resonance imaging carries a high diagnostic yield in patients with Minoka, particularly where cardiac magnetic resonance imaging is performed during the index hospitalization. More importantly, the study demonstrates that CMR diagnoses predict long-term prognosis. It was very interesting and unexpected to note that those patients with a normal cardiac magnetic resonance study, namely those patients with true Minoka, actually had a higher rate of major adverse cardiac events. This in turn may be related to the lower use of guideline recommended myocardial infarction therapy in those patients with true Minoka when compared to those patients with CMR-confirmed myocardial infarction. Based on the findings of this study, we would propose that cardiac magnetic resonance imaging be utilized in patients with troponin-positive acute coronary syndromes where coronary angiography does not demonstrate obstructive coronary artery disease as a cause for the presentation. This would be in order to determine the cause of the patient's initial presentation and allow the prognostication of these patients and better management by the treating clinician. This study should be performed during the patient's initial presentation as prior literature would suggest a reduction in the diagnostic yield of, card of cardiac magnetic resonance imaging where it is delayed to being performed after hospital discharge. It is particularly important to note that a normal cardiac magnetic resonance study is associated with a worse prognosis and that this may potentially be associated with the reduced use of guideline recommended myocardial infarction therapy. Future research is required to determine prospectively if management based on CMR findings with trial-defined management protocols for each diagnosis can improve patient outcomes in this population of patients with a working diagnosis of Minoka. Additionally, we do note that CMR, particularly prior to hospital discharge, is not feasible at a variety of centers internationally. And so future research into the role of echocardiography in screening and diagnosing such patients may allow for improved access to a definitive diagnosis at centers without ready access to early CMR imaging. Thank you very much for your time and attention. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter more information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.